Now I know what you're thinking. Another travel show about some schmuck on vacation where you'll never go on a budget you can't afford. Well, this isn't that sort of travel show, and I'm not that kind of host. My name is Alec Pinkston. I've spent years traveling all over the world on a shoestring budget without a guidebook, searching for the kind of adventure that you only find without a map. This isn't a history lesson, it's not a culinary tour. This is how to see the most, spend the least, and find the heart of a city and its people. This is how to get lost, Amsterdam. This is the Netherlands. This is Holland. Netherlands, Holland. Holland is a part of the Netherlands, whose people are called the Dutch. Amsterdam. Take a super Fisher metropolis where anything goes, and then dip it in the quaint tidiness and unmistakable charm that is the Dutch. On the surface, it's one of the cleanest cities I've ever been to, but below the surface is a reputation for all the things that first lured me here as a 20-year-old pot and hookers. What brings me back this time is the Netherlands are in the World Cup Finals. Now I've got three days and twelve hundred dollars to show you how to visit Amsterdam. And if you've already been, I'm going to show you what you missed. But first, we have to get there. endless sea of tourist traps to be navigated in Amsterdam, which is why we've enlisted the help of a few locals. My main man in Amsterdam is Chad. Originally from Cleveland, Chad has lived in the Netherlands for two years and makes friends with everyone he meets. This is the only European city you've lived in? That I've lived in, yeah. This is the first one I've lived in. So far so good though? Yeah, I love it. Like, it's, it's, it's a good life. Another expat with Dutch experience is Pep. Founder of Boom Chicago Theater, the center of comedy in Amsterdam. There's a certain lifestyle of living here, uh, which is just a bit laid back but still busy. They got a little thing they call gezellig. They say it doesn't have a translation, but it does. It means cozy. Chilled out. And uh, warm. Cool, comfortable atmosphere. Anytime you're around friends and drinking beer and there's a candle that it's gezellig. You got to realize a lot of the culture comes from that idea. The stereotypes I get about Americans, we're loud, we're fat, we're dumb. I hit two or three of those, so <laughs> it's all good. But like, those, those are kind of the main ones. You don't have to be the loudest dude in the whole bar. We all know you're funny. You're gonna get laid this trip. You gotta be malleable. You can't come expecting that your surroundings are gonna adapt to you. You gotta adapt. Don't dress like a frat dude and quiet down a little bit. I guess my, my advice for the guys. For the girls, please continue sleeping with all the European guys. They love it. How do you say hello in Dutch? Hello. When we come back, we'll eat, we'll drink, and we'll hang out with Chad. <laughs> My only request on a night out with Chad was to avoid tourists. When he recommended we start with a whiskey bar, I knew I'd need to get a bite first. And that's when I met Fabo. All right, so Dutch food isn't exactly something to write home about, but at the very least, it can be ready immediately. And there's no better example of that than the wall of food. Fabo, baby. So if you want food now, you can get food now of just about any flavor possible. You walk, especially in the coffee shop areas, and there's like a million different pastries. The waffles dipped in chocolate is a big thing I've seen. Stroke waffle is good, syrup with the waffle, real yeah. good stuff. Real good for snacks, the sweets here are great, yeah. I think. Any so. city that has legal weed has to have food available yeah, immediately. Yeah, you need the munchies. That's why the food ain't that good. It doesn't yeah. have to be, man. Presenting the famous Fable Croquette. If you had to guess when this was made, what would you say? 
about nine hours ago. <laughs> 300 million of these Dutch nuggets are served in Holland each year. That's 18 per person. So someone's eating these things. What animal are you leaning towards here? Amalgamation of pork and beef and like onions and whatnot in it. It's not that bad though, right? It's not that bad at all. No, it's not bad. If I just stepped out of a coffee shop for three hours, this yeah, might be the greatest be the meat. <laughs> This might be the best thing I've ever had. It's like an enormous Chicken McNugget. Yeah. Only, unfortunately, you're able to inspect it a little bit more than maybe you'd like to necessarily. It's a little greasier than a Chicken McNugget. Bro. That's all right. Here's to Holland. It's incredible that this isn't more available in the United States. Yeah, I'm really shocked that it's not over there, honestly. I think, I think America's to eat it up. We're usually at the, literally, we're usually at the forefront of getting fat technology. <laughs> and ways to increase our <laughs> heart attack. We invented the fourth meal. Does it work though? The fourth meal. Hidden under a thick layer of touristy gimmicks, kebab stands, and fries covered in. Man, man. There are actually some good spots to eat in Amsterdam. For instance, foodism. A cafe that feels more like an apartment than a restaurant. It's very cozy, the service is very casual, and the food was so good that it was eaten before we could get a picture. first contacted Chad after reading his blog. Even though he's not Dutch, he seems to know how to find a party wherever he is, and our night together would be no different. We started at Whiskey l &D. It's a quiet spot with a loud collection of whiskey. A few drinks in, Chad tipped me off to the best beer in the Netherlands, and it's not Heineken. If you want your grandmother to experience a rave without actually hurting her, Heineken experience might be the closest thing you can do. But if you really want to taste good Dutch beer, that's not the brewery you go to. For some real Dutch beer, we head to a windmill. The Brewery IJ. Once served as the neighborhood bathhouse, now serves as the neighborhood bar. The decor is simple, the vibe is gezellig, the tour is free, and the beer is delicious. So where are we heading to now? Uh, Bittersuit. They play like the classic hip hop, the music that that music was sampled from as well. Oh, nice. A lot of soul. Again, very close to Central Station, but it, it, it's going to be a straight Dutch crowd. Nice. So it's sweet. You'll love it. Like 25 supermodel looking chicks eating popsicles. Yes. I mean, yeah, I mean women like, in wet dresses from the rain. Dancing eating so popsicles. erotically to eating great popsicles. music while eating popsicles. No sh four to one girl to guy ratio. That's why you ask a local. <laughs> That's why you ask a local. How do you say? I don't understand. When we come back, we'll get high, get laid, and go on a field trip. There are families and churches, a Cartier store, and even a Buddhist temple. 
It's here that sailors embarked on voyages to new worlds. Ladies welcome them home. Where Rembrandt first sketched and Tarantino penned Pulp Fiction. And although there's one in most major European cities, it's Amsterdam's red light district that is world famous. Not at all what you would expect by day and beyond your expectations at night. Yes, we have the red light district, and uh -huh. no, I would not recommend tourists to go there. Uh -huh. On the other hand, it is the oldest part of the city, mm -hmm. and it's very beautiful. So and if you could look beyond this whole sex industry there. And during the day, I think if you walked around during the red light district during the day, you would have no idea that's the area of town you were in. People expect that it's seedy and no, dirty, no, no, but no, I think no, if no. you walked around during the day, you would have no idea that there's prostitutes there Absolutely. At night. So it's a very beautiful part. It's the oldest part of the city, it's actually where the it's very near where the dam, the Amsterdam was. Uh -huh. And uh, so the houses there, if you're interested in that, can be older, older than 500 years. One of those 500 year old houses is now a bar. According to legend, broke sailors could pay for their drinks with monkeys. Int Eipen. A lighted window attached to a bedroom will rent for about $200 and will make upwards of 800 bucks a night. The prostitutes tend to group themselves near women of similar sizes and ethnicities. But if the light is black instead of red, well, that's a dude. There's also a union, the Red Thread, which provides financial consulting, healthcare, and counseling. Tourists are the ones who are in the red light district. That's, you know, primarily a tourist spot. If you catch, like really, if you catch Dutch people down there, they work down there. So it's not this den of, uh, you know, Inequity. sin yeah. that, that uh, Bill O'Reilly would have you believe <laughs> it is. It's really, that's not how it rolls. just want a good clean sex show, check out Casa Rosso. Or just take a picture with the dick fan. The red light district is the embodiment of misconceptions when it comes to Amsterdam. It is a pragmatic scarlet letter worn with unexpected beauty. In an effort to filter out pimps and sex slaves, the city has closed almost a quarter of the windows recently and rented them instead to artists and designers at a discount. The impact of artists runs deep here, and I've never known that to be a bad thing. Netherlands Dry Dock and Shipmaking Company. Free boat ride from Central Station to an abandoned shipping yard, rescued by artists. Where old crates become new studios, abandoned warehouses become new offices, and an old plane is a new stage. The NDSM is the urban Dutch at their best, a former industrial graveyard transformed by squatting artists into a thriving cultural center. Various events attract over 150,000 visitors a year. Performances, festivals, exhibitions, parties, and there's even a skate contest. You may find Santa with a blackface sidekick of mysterious origins named Zwarte Pete. Pretend it's not racist and pay him no mind. Netherlands 1976. As countries across Europe battled a rising heroin epidemic, the Dutch got an idea. The Opium Act officially made the country tolerant of softer drugs like marijuana and hash, and as a result, harder drug use declined. Why? Well, it turns out the upselling drug dealer was the real gateway to harder drugs, so they simply removed the middleman. 
Did this usher in an era of reefer madness across the Netherlands? Not exactly. A lot of people just think that because it's tolerated here, it's just omnipresent. It isn't. I mean, most Dutch people I know don't smoke weed. Americans are two times more likely to use pot and three times more likely to use heroin than the Dutch. Potheads add $500 million to the Dutch tax revenue annually. Now, coffee shops can't sell to minors, and five grams per person is the maximum. They also close at 1 a.m. and can't serve liquor. Mushrooms were recently banned, but were soon replaced by hallucinogenic truffles and are available at so-called smart shops. You just can't smoke anywhere. Yeah. Uh, at the clubs you can, like in the smoking areas, you can do that. But that again, that's a nightlife venue. It's cool. Yeah. But yeah, just you know, even walking down the street, it's not a big deal. But you could probably, it's better just go to the park and light up there. <laughs> How do you say in Dutch? Who is Jacket in Netherlands? When we come back, we'll explore how to get around in the main event, the World Cup Finals. The best way to get around Amsterdam is bicycle. When you hear this sound, you're in a bike lane. A Dutch person is delicately asking you to get the f out of the way. Bikes account for more than 40% of transportation in the city. Now how do you find your bike in a garage this big? I have no idea. bike around the city and you just can't believe how easy it is and how much smaller the city feels and you're scared at first but if the rule in Amsterdam is if you get hit by a car it's always the car's fault it's like getting rear-ended in the States have you had any Problems with getting your bike stolen? I know there's so many bikes out there. The last time I, the last time I had my bike stolen, uh, I left my keys in the bike, and, and it was on the lights of line. So, is that stolen or is that here's a free bike? Uh, enjoy your new heroin. It's estimated in Amsterdam that 220 bikes are stolen every day. That's 16% of all bikes each year. How many bikes have you gone through? Well, let's say in, in the 20, 20s. <laughs> When was the last? When was the last time the previous one got stolen? <laughs> uh, half a year ago, uh, a bike got stolen again. So uh, you need good locks, and uh, even then, are bikes pretty cheap as a result of that? Yeah. No, that's a bummer. As a result, they are more expensive. I would say. <laughs> Not if you buy them hot. Junkies near this word sell bikes for about the same price as a day's rental. When in doubt, rickshaw. To say to one beautiful girl. Something you're gonna say, I call for now. What does yes. that mean? I love you, like this. I call for now. I call for now. I call for now. I love you. That's good. Thing. That's a bit forward. What if I just say, I want to love you for one night? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot love for one, day, one night, man. Are rickshaws Dutch? No. Are they touristy? Probably. But if you've just seen hallucinogenic truffles, it's an urban roller coaster. Plus, the drivers are friendly and the rates are negotiable. For an even cheaper ride, take the train. It's free at night. They're not free, but it's surprisingly easy to not pay. Every time I've left Amsterdam, I've been shocked that somebody that I've been with hasn't gotten hit by a train, or bike, or rickshaw, or a cab, or a person, or bus.
In a couple of hours there will be more than 100,000 people here on the field. One big party. Go! Going, uh, I don't know how you say it, but uh, we're going crazy. We became second two times, so tonight uh, we want to win this game. Very excited. Very. We couldn't sleep. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so excited. I didn't sleep the whole night and now I'm here at 1 o'clock and my heart is bumping like 200 times a minute. But I'm very confident that we will win this time. I don't think we're going to lose tonight. Really excited. Really excited. Because we're going to win. Holland is going to take the World Cup tonight. Holland's going to win. They will win with 2 to 1. When it's over, when we win, I can die. I think my life is complete. <laughs> But if they don't win, it's okay. It's a big party anyway. We also like the second place. The World Cup Finals. A game every little non-American boy dreams of playing in. What better way to say goodbye than shoulder to shoulder with 100,000 of my hosts? Sure, they lost the game, but like you heard, either way, it's a party. And since you probably won't be lucky enough to catch a World Cup Final when you visit, here's what you missed. I've never left Amsterdam without the strong desire to move here. There's not one reason why, you just have to see it for yourself. And I can only hope that this show brings you a bit closer to doing just that. Uh, it's home. How hard was it to find a job over here? Yo, uh, honestly, I didn't look until uh -huh. I ran out of money. <laughs> and, uh, when, I ran, when I ran out of money, I got a job in a week. Travel tip 114. If they give you two double beds pushed together, you can't <laughs> the crevice.